Hey, I'm Ty, an in-house animator at Procreate, and I'm here to walk you through Procreate Dreams 2.0. Procreate Dreams is an animation app available on iPad, with frame-by-frame -frame animation, keyframing, performing and editing, Procreate Dreams is a powerful portable animation studio that carries over the wonderful drawing experience from Procreate. Version 2.0 is our first major update to the product with some pretty exciting changes. If you already own Procreate Dreams, 2.0 will come to you as a free update. So if you're familiar with Procreate Dreams and animation or just starting out, in this video we'll give you an overview of the whole app showcasing the new features whilst walking you through the essential tools and gestures to get started and jump right into animating. Let's create a new movie. There's a few templates here and more preset options for your project's resolution, frame rate and duration, but we can alter these later. We'll simply begin by creating a new flipbook. This is our flipbook animation here. Open it up by tapping Edit Flipbook. Here we are. Creating frame-by-frame -frame animation in flipbook is super intuitive. Grab a brush and your color of choice and draw on the canvas. Tapping on the next frame, then drawing a change in motion. We're already on our way to animating. Hit play, or scrub through the track to quickly test your work. Use Select and Transform to make adjustments to your image. Tap the Select tool and draw around a specific area to select. Swipe down with three fingers to use Copy and Paste. And with Transform selected, choose a mode and use the red nodes to shape and resize your object, and the green node to rotate. You can apply image filters to edit colors, add noise, sharpen, or a blur. Here I'm adjusting the strength of my filter by sliding to the right, increasing my blur effect. Any transform actions or filters you set are baked in when applied to the image. You can two finger tap anywhere on the screen to undo and go back a step, and three finger tap to redo. With a long hold to open up the frame options, and here we can duplicate the frame, insert a blank frame, or change the duration of the frame. You can also do this by tapping on the frame and pulling on the side handles. If you have a keyboard for your iPad, you can use shortcuts which make quick work. Here adjusting the length of our selected frame with the plus or minus keys. The left and right keys are also handy for moving forward or back a frame. Guide your drawn motion with onion skins to see your previous and future frames. With each frame, you can use multiple drawing layers. Here I'm applying a clipping mask on the top layer to bind my paint strokes to the shape underneath, and then tapping the end to open the blending mode options. This affects how the layer interacts with the layers underneath, and I'm lowering the opacity of the layer to make it more transparent. Great, we've got an animated bouncing ball, but it would be useful if the shadow was separate, so let's add another track. You can add multiple tracks to keep drawing elements independent. This makes it easy for us to individually edit and animate them. You can toggle each track's visibility on or off. And with a long hold on that check mark, change the track's opacity or apply a blend mode or mask here too. These will affect all the frames on that track. This is the multi-select tool, which I'll use to retime multiple frames at once. Drag and drop any of your existing Procreate artworks or animations straight into Dreams. As well as your favorite brushes. In the brush panel, you'll see that there are multiple brush sets, as well as multiple libraries. There are hundreds of brushes to explore. With brush stabilization, we can keep our line work smooth. And brush memory sizes helps our line work stay consistent between frames. Any settings you've made for a brush are remembered for the next time you pick it up. That's the basics of Flipbook. If we close the view, we'll see that this whole Flipbook mode actually sits neatly inside of our timeline. The timeline is the space where we navigate everything. We can add different types of content, including additional Flipbook animations, 
static drawings, music, text, and video. We can edit and arrange our content on tracks, play through the animation, and see how it's all looking together on the stage. We can shift the timeline up and down to display more of the stage or the timeline. You might find that you prefer to flip the iPad into portrait mode for more height. Here are the movie settings, where we can change our project settings, edit preferences, share and export our work. There are some other cool things in here too, discover more keyboard shortcuts, or in history, explore previous versions of your project. In the stage menu, I'll go ahead and change the background color. Working with a touch screen means that gestures are an integral part of the experience. With one finger, slide along the top of the timeline to expand and contract your view. A two finger pinch to zoom in and out. A three finger swipe will also expand and shrink the timeline's length, but also the height. Double tap to focus in on a frame. And a quick pinch motion to zoom out and quickly fit all your content into view. In the timeline, we have three modes, Compose, Keyframe, and Perform. Each is specialized for different animation workflows. Let's talk about the Keyframe mode first. Unlike a flipbook animation where you draw or paint changes on each frame to create motion, in the Keyframe mode, we take an existing image and apply changes to it. By manually plotting our key points of change at set times, we create animated motion within that space and time between those key frames. The keyframe is what captures our points of change on the timeline. To make a keyframe, tap on the playhead. We can set keyframes for actions such as move, warp and distort, and filters such as opacity, hue saturation and brightness, noise and blur. To move an object in keyframe mode, tap to select it. We'll see a bounding box is activated, then hold to move. Hitting the corner nodes will reveal handles for rotating. And in the transform options, you can flip the image or change the anchor point from which it moves. To adjust how fast or slow the motion is, move the keyframes closer or further apart. We can also play with how the speed behaves during that time, with a long hold on the space between keyframes and selecting what's called an easing. An ease in will ramp up and accelerate the motion. An ease out will slow down at the end. A linear movement has an even constant speed. And with a long hold on the keyframe itself, we can copy and paste the keyframe's properties to repeat the action. In some cases, however, keyframed action is more intuitive or easily achieved by performing the motion. This is a really impressive feature that records your animation in real time. As opposed to manually inputting keyframes, when in performing mode, if you act out the animation, the keyframes will be input for you as the motion is recorded and captured. All properties that you can keyframe can also be performed. Performing can make quick work of fast or repetitive movements, but it'll also express flowing natural animated movement really well too. It's likely you'll try a few different takes before getting the right performance, but just like with Procreate, you can two finger tap to quickly go back a step and undo. Or jumping back to the start and performing again, the new keyframes will replace the previous ones for you. But there's no need to be perfect here. We can edit or finesse the results too. Tapping the Perform button again opens Modifications. Smooth out the animation with motion filtering, or inversely remove any filtering to get a true representation of your performance. Additionally, a long hold on the keyframe track will give us the option to expand the move and scale keyframes, revealing each parameter separately. The X and Y position, the scale, and rotation, all on separate tracks. So it's possible to edit and fine tune these properties individually. Here, because my tennis ball is veering off to the right, 
I'll go ahead and delete the X position keyframes, so now the tennis ball flies up in a straight line. Which leads us to the compose mode. This is kind of the home base. It's an overall view of your project with no clutter. You'll see that our keyframes are no longer visible when switching to this mode. Here we can move, arrange and retime content and our keyframed work won't accidentally get in the way. To move content around, give it a long hole to pick it up. Tap on the content where the playhead sits to reveal handles. Use these to adjust the content's length. Hold one finger down while retiming to nudge the following content along, or draw it back in like a magnet. If you move items around on the stage while in compose mode, keyframes on that content won't be disrupted, and the intended motion remains intact. This also applies to flipbook animation. If the starting position is moved or even rotated, the keyframes or flipbook frames will animate relative to that new position. You can select multiple pieces of content at once with the multi-select tool. When activated, the Apple Pencil will select tracks, content, or even keyframes. I can use this to grab an entire section of content I want to make changes to. Here with a long hold, I'm going to group all this content together. Groups expand and collapse, keeping the timeline tidy and nests content together, meaning we can holistically apply effects to all the group content at once. Another great way to keep your work organized is to name your content or color code it with a highlight. And the blend modes and masks will affect how our content interacts with neighboring tracks, just like our blend modes and clipping masks in the layers panel when drawing. Here I've made a shadow and masked it to the entire group below containing my character. Great, now we know our way around Procreate Dreams 2. We've learned about flipbook, keyframing, performing and composing. We've learned how to make and add images, how to animate them by moving them and applying effects. And we've learned how to navigate the space that they live in. The last thing to do is to trim off any blank space at the start and end of our movie and share it with the world. Back in our movie settings, we can export our work. There's a default video export option as well as advanced export settings. For a full list of the new and updated features, go to procreate.com or check out our dedicated What's New video. And if you'd like more information on how to use specific features in the app, you can head to our online handbook. I hope this walkthrough has been helpful and given you enough know-how to confidently explore Procreate Dreams 2 and make some awesome moving images. We're absolutely dedicated to making tools that amplify human creativity, so thank you for your interest, your involvement, patience and feedback. I can't wait to see what you create.